Okay, welcome. What I want to talk to you about in today's lesson is this topic of pay-per-click marketing. And so where we are right now is we are inside of my Google AdWords account and uh, just checking in on the stats. And it looks like so far today, not doing so bad, 64 leads, $1.46 a lead, 17.98% conversion, pretty good. And you can see, one thing I want you to see even on this page, before we go through some of the best practices I want to share with you for doing pay-per-click marketing, is conversion rates vary per campaign. So a campaign is a group of what are called ad groups. So if you think about your computer and you can put file folders there and then have folders inside of it, a campaign is a big folder. An ad group is a small folder, and inside of that small folder, you have your keywords. And so from here, you can see these are different campaigns, and different campaigns, just like different ad groups within the campaign, are going to have different conversion rates. This one's 25. I even have one that's as high as 83.3, so, you know, six clicks today and uh, five leads. I'll take that. And down here we have uh, one, this is the worst one so far today, 10.34, $2.35 per lead. So, heck, you can't win them all, right? But what I want to go through, so I just want to display that to you. It's going to vary, and it's going to vary by day. And so what I want to go through first are some campaign settings that I think are essential. So let's pick one of these campaigns. And the first thing I want to show you here is your campaign settings. And there's this button called Edit Campaign Settings. Let's walk through what campaign settings you should have set. Number one, let's move this over so you can see. Budget. You can see I set my budget to $1,000 a day. Seems excessive. Now, you can also see before that, you know, I'd only spent about $93 so far today. So it tells you one thing. You can set your budget high and you're not going to hit it. Strategically, why you do this is because it tells Google that at every opportunity, when someone searches for a certain keyword, I want my ad to display. If you take a scarcity mindset into this and you say, well, I only want to spend $5 a day, you may miss some of your best prospects. Because what you'll see as you get more advanced and you learn new things in Google AdWords is sometimes of the day are better for lead conversion and sales conversion and recruit recruit conversion than others and you can't even find that out unless you're getting a lot of exposure at first so that's why you want to have a high daily budget don't be scared by it you're not gonna hit it just set it high so you can get a lot of exposure number two delivery method accelerated again another strategy to get you maximum exposure so just click that one now down here what you want to have is something different from what I have. You only want your ads to display in the Google search network. I have these two checked. You do not want them checked. So you want this unchecked and you want this unchecked. I'm going to get a little message and we're going to say cancel. But you just want those unchecked because the Google search network means when someone search in the, searches into Google for a certain keyword, uh, your ad shows up. The content network and the, and the search partners is a... It's a more advanced topic. We, we won't get into that now. Just make sure you have them unchecked when you start. So let's go down here to the next uh, piece of information you need to know. Scheduling and serving. Down here, you want to choose Rotate. Show ads more evenly. The reason you want to choose that option is because it's going to allow, it's going to allow you to see the true results of let's say you're split testing two different ads maybe there's one word different and you can start to see these little micro changes in terms of how they're gonna affect your conversions hopefully we can I can show you an example of that in a few if you put it on optimize Google's gonna start to say well this one's better and start to send more traffic that way we don't want that to happen we want our ads to show as evenly as possible so that when we want to turn off an ad and use the other one because it looks better we're controlling that process so that's the one you want checked finally where do you want your ads displayed these countries I would choose Australia to start I wouldn't choose all the countries I have Australia to start I would also do the UK and United States 
and I would also do Canada. I would just start with those countries. The reason is because, <clears throat> and I'll tell you a quick story. When I first started, I would have my ad show across the world. I would get tons of traffic, tons of leads, but it never did anything. So I had to go back and refine my list. And when I did that, I started off with the countries I just told you. And the reason why is because these are the countries where people most likely are going to have money. So that's where you want to display your ads. People that are likely to join your business, people that are likely to spend money with you. So be selective. Okay, so now that we've got that handled, let's go back up to the top here. And let's see if we can look at a couple best practices within a campaign. So let's go back. And uh, within this campaign, let's check out a couple best practices within an ad group. That's what I meant to say. So we're looking at results for this month. And I want to find one specific ad group. Yeah, this one right here. And as you can see, not a ton of traffic, 19 clicks, and 36.84% uh, conversion rate, 7 leads. Not bad. I'll take it. Let's click it so we can go in there. And here's what I want to show you. Other best practices. Within your ad group, number one, you want to have less than 10 keywords. If I, I didn't show you this, but I have about 216 different ad groups in that campaign I was just showing you because each one has a specific small number of keywords that are targeted to each ad. In your ad, you want to use your main keyword in the headline, at the end of the URL, and if you can, somewhere here in the ad. Now, I didn't do it here because I thought I was cooler than that. I'm not really, but I, you should do it because it's going to make your ad more relevant. Now, here's that situation I was showing you or talking to you about. Minute changes between two different two different variations of uh, ads. Only thing different here is the headline. This is Dagan for real, Dagan secrets. Now which one wins? And this is interesting. So in other words, you always want to be split testing. Best practice. Let's go over here and look. Looks like we had 11 clicks for the one that has a question mark and that's to be expected because when you have uh, a question mark at the end of your headline, and this is a, this is a cool little tip to, to get in and understand, you're going to have a higher click-through rate. Questions are, you know, we're curious. So we'll click it more, and this is just an example of that. So 11 clicks, 0.13% conversion rate. That's fine with me because I have a lot of stuff going on that is more advanced, and we're just talking about basic best practices. Compared to eight clicks and 0.6% uh, click through rate. So clearly the question mark wins. But look over here. This other one, Dagan Smith, this is Dagan Smith for real, actually has a slightly con higher conversion rate. So which do we choose? Well, it depends on what we want. Do we want more leads by essence of more traffic, or do we want higher conversions from traffic to lead? And that's the judgment call that you make, but doing split tests allows you to see these sorts of variations and make those choices. So those are best practices. Make sure you have your campaign set up right, you have small ad groups, and you have highly relevant ads to your, to your keywords, and you're split testing different ads. So get to playing, have some fun, and I'll see you in the next lesson.